New, 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 new. We still need a new song. I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah. This is actually updated. We have um, our Wi-Fi adapter that we carried before got discontinued, and uh, we didn't really know it was discontinued until we asked the factory uh, after two months, hey, where's our shipment? And they're like, oh, it's discontinued. And we're like, damn. So we got another one, which is just as good. Um, and it's actually a little bit more compact, and um, it, sl it slides nicer into a, a USB port, which we like. Uh, but you can't remove the antenna. But yeah. it works really great. We've tested it. It works perfect with a Raspberry Pi. It uses yeah. the same chipset as our other Wi-Fi adapters. There it is in our Raspberry Pi case. Yes. It's okay. Lovely. Next up. Next up. What is this thing? This is an Ubec. An Ubec? Ubec. It's a, a universal battery eliminator circuit. And I'll show it on the overhead because it is actually a little bit uh, tough to see what's going on here. But it's a little circuit board. And basically, uh, technically, uh, you would call this a... Um, a buck converter and it's it's handy it's actually using RC circuitry but it's also really great for um, microcontroller projects because it generates five volts so let's go to the overhead okay let's is this the first time an Ubeck has been on live internet I don't know okay so this is the Ubeck itself it's a circuit and it's a uh, little buck converter oh, and this is the input this is the input wires over here and then inside you can see there's a capacitor and there's an inductor. There's actually a chip underneath here on the circuit board. And it's covered with heat shrink, which is kind of nice. There's some output ceramic capacitors. And then there's a cable on the outside. And this goes to an RC connector, but um, you can just cut it off or, or disconnect it. And you can uh, plug in, um, let's see, uh, basically 6 to 23 volts into here. And you'll get 5 volts up to 3 amps out. And it actually will give you up to 3 amps. Um, the driver chip, I don't remember the part number, but it's on the, the data sheet is on the product page. Um, we, I actually hooked this up to an electronic load and drew three, three amps on it. And it got a little warm, but um, it still ran. Uh, the nice thing about this Ubeck compared to many other Ubecks, we have a box of Ubecks. Um, and most of them don't really, uh, you need like seven volts at least. And this one actually was very happy with uh, as little as six volts. So you can run this off of four AA batteries. Um, alkaline batteries or a couple of rechargeables and it'll give you a nice uh, clean 5 volts out and it's great for microcontrollers, Raspberry Pi, whatever. Digital LED strips, a lot of people want to run these LED strips uh, uh, remotely on a battery pack and it's like you need actually like 5 volts and the closer you can get to exactly 5 volts the better. Um, so this is really nice because it gives you a really nice 5 volt output and up to 3 amps. So I really like the Zubac. It's a, a great solution okay. and Co it's a good price. A couple quick questions about it. Yes. Um, what happens if you draw more power than 3 amps? It will overheat and it will uh, the protection circuit inside will it'll cut out. Okay. What's the efficiency? Um, is it better than like a 7805? It's much, much better than 7805. This is actually a buck converter, which is why it's a little more expensive. There's more circuitry. Uh, I actually took numbers for input and output for current draw. Check the product page. Hopefully somebody will post it. You can see I have a little table where you can see the input and output and the current in and the current out. Okay. But what's nice is that if you're... If you you're the bottom, and the, the bottom is just a... It's the label. It's, okay. just, it's just a circuit. It's covered with a um, heat shrink. Uh, it, it will draw... You know, if you're drawing... Uh, if you have 15 volts in and 5 volts out, it'll draw a third of the current from the 15-volt connection. So it is, it is much more efficient... Probably around like 87 percent efficient. Does it fold back or fry? I don't know what the, the question means. I wouldn't I wouldn't put more than 23 volts in. Um, okay. You could check the data sheet for the controller chip. Has a lot more details about max voltages, max current, ripple, all that good stuff. So um, for more details, do check the data sheet for the controller. This is basically just a breakout board for the controller chip. All right. Next up, we want to learn along. Get these little remotes. These little remotes. These are actually we have the four uh, pin remotes, and therefore our simple RF boards, which I uh, forgot to bring the demo for. But basically, um, you press the button on the remote, and on the receiver, when we have multiple different receivers in the store, um, the pin goes high or low. So there's no microcontroller, no UR, nothing. It's just you press the button here, thing, pin goes up to five volts over there. That's handy. It's very, very, very easy. We have yeah. a couple. We have one that you can have multiple buttons at a time. We have one receiver that can, you know, one or another, one that toggles. Um, but we had the, f it, the receiver has four connections. But some people said, well, I have a project that's so simple, I don't need four, four connections. And to make it easier on me, I'd actually like a, a remote, a transmitter that has fewer than four buttons. So like, okay, yeah. so we got some two and single button ones. You can use the four button one. It's just, this is maybe a little more elegant for your usage. It's the only difference, it just has fewer buttons. Next up. Mini camera. 
Very tiny camera. Yeah, this is uh, exactly the same as our big JPEG camera. It's a UART controlled camera, so you control it with a microcontroller, and it will uh, compress the uh, images into JPEGs, which is really handy because um, microcontrollers can't store and handle like large images very easily. Um, but it's really, really small, and uh, it's really great if you're if you're building a project and you just want it to be super teeny. So I'm not going to demo the. Um, the, uh, here, let me turn this off. Let me see if I can get this to connect. Okay, so I'll get some glare. So I have the camera over here. Oh, well, wow. And you can, uh, oh, wait. I'm looking at you. Upside looking at it. I'll just, I'll just turn this upside down. Okay. Do you know so what sensor is in the, the camera? Uh, it's a CMOS sensor. I don't have the part number, although I'm still trying to find it. Um, do check the data sheet that might be in there so you can see me. And this is just the, the color video output, just to show that you can also do AV output. That's cool. But uh, when you can use it as a color, like NTSC camera, which is a color NTSC camera, it can you know, look at itself even get really confused. Oh, woo, zoom. Um, but uh, what it's really good for is it's um, UART controlled, so you can connect to it at 38. 0.4 kilobaud um, and grab images and stills and has a motion detector. It's just a very small version of the camera and it's uh, very easy to use. So um, our bigger camera is very popular. This one's just smaller. I think the you know it's just a you can't focus as much. But okay. It's it's quite a good lens. Yeah, super fast too. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this is the uh, yeah the the video. It's meant for security cameras. Okay. It's got a nice color. You can really see them quite pink. All right. Our lady, it is secure. <coughs> Next up. We have a little sensor. Yeah, this sensor's so small, I can't show it on the overhead. I mean, I can, but it's just like really well, let's small. Let's try. It's really small. Let's try. Um, it. There's no sensor. I can't see it. I know. I'm working on it. So this sensor is, is yeah, it's super teeny. Sensors are so small. So it's a it's a little little guy in the middle there. And it, we made the, the circuit board particularly large. We wanted to have a mounting hole. And it's an analog um, light sensor. So it's really handy if you like, say you don't want to use a microcontroller or if you just want an analog input, you don't need an I2C, you want something simple. And the really nice thing about this is um, it, uh, it's a logarithmic output sensor. So most light sensors are linear, which means that if the light level doubles, the voltage doubles. Or you know sometimes you can put a resistor or some feedback thing. But it, it's, it's usually not, it's not, it's either non-linear or it's like not logarithmic. It's kind of something like in the middle, especially photo cells. And our digital uh, light sensors are, are, are um, they're logarithmic, but they're digital. But if you want something analog, this one's quite nice because compared to most analog sensors, the output um, is is very sensitive at the low end and not as sensitive at the high end, which is how our eyes work. Because right? our eyes are very sensitive at low light levels. We can set, we can sense small differences, and that's why like when somebody turns on the light in the morning, your eyeballs like hurt so much because it's just such a sudden change. Um, but you know, going from inside to outside maybe doesn't is not as painful because like we've adapted to the light levels. So this sensor acts a little bit more like our eyes. It is very sensitive at low levels and not as sensitive at high levels, so it, it can measure a wider range. And you can use it with an analog input quite easily. Basically, it's just a very good um, way to measure uh, something in very dark or very bright at the same time without having to do weird calibration or like adjustment of um, of like resistors or stuff. So it's a, it's a nice analog sensor. It's a little bit more expensive than the photo cell, but it's uh, much better calibrated and uh, um, much wider range, a huge dynamic range, up to like 55,000 lux or something, which is really bright. OK. Uh, next up, I consider this the start of the show tonight beside you. Um, this is our new sharp memory displays. Um, these are incredible to look at. Um, of course, seeing them in person is the, the best way. We have some great photos that show that it's a uh, reflective screen. Um, we have a video on the product page that really shows it, but we're going to do it live now. Yeah, I think live. So, is, live yeah, is look good. at that. So this is the sharp display. So yeah, this is a really good. Get it? Hold on. Try get. It. So it's it's reflective actually. <laughs> it's it's kind of mirrored, but um, it when you look at it, it, it looks uh, dark, like a dark silver against a, a, a kind of matte silver, and I'll, uh, I'll start the demo program. And um, yeah, these are made by Sharp, 
and um, the, like the company that makes sensors, and they're they're actually often seen now in um, like smart watches. Yeah, like a Pebble watch. Is, like Pebble watch yeah. uses a, a very similar display. There's a little higher resolution, but same basic idea. And the cool thing about this is um, these displays are monochrome and they're extremely low power. You only have to refresh them. Um, they use like almost no power, and in fact, you only have to like turn them on once a second to refresh them. So you can have a display. It's it's not e-ink. So if I turn the power, it will fade out, but it's not. It will fade out a little slowly, not not as fast as um, uh, um, like an LCD, which will just turn off immediately. So it's nice that you if you kind of refresh it every half second, it's like you know you can actually turn off your mic controller, go to sleep, less power, yeah. Wake up every half second, you know, refresh it, and then go back to sleep again. And so it uses very very little power, but it's much faster refresh than e-ink. The problem with e-ink is that um, you can only refresh the image once a second or two, like a like a book, like an e-book reader. You know, you, you you turn the page and it kind of does that little flippy thing and then it turns. You can't like go really fast. It's it's slow. You can't refresh it more than a second or time. But this is like as you can see, it's like real time <clears throat> display updates, very very fast. It's as fast as a TFT, but has a low power of e-ink. So it's, it's like a memory display. So some people call it like e-paper like um yeah. but it, it's a very sharp very beautiful display and we put it on a breakout board because it's unfortunately kind of delicate and hard to use otherwise so it's five volt compliant on the breakout board there's um some pins you get up to an arduino it needs three pins it's really easy we have a library a little tutorial up it's a nice yeah. uh, nice little screen it uses a lot of memory unfortunately because it, it um because write only you have to buffer it so like our um graphics some of our graphics tfts the monochrome ones you do have to buffer the 1K of memory in uh, the Arduino. So yeah. you can't use this in another big library that uses a lot of memory, but um, you could easily design like a watch type project or yeah. a, a smart display. This is cool. This is, not, this is kind of a classic Adafruit uh, product, I think. You, you take something that's very hard to use, impossible, and then make yeah. something so people can actually do something cool with it. Yes, um, let me see if I unplug it. Yeah, it fades slowly. Oh, it fades. So you could, you could just hit it. And uh, that's why it uh, doesn't require as much power. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, hold on. Let me. There, it's back. There, it's back. So I can I can remove the power. It's kind of hard to see, but if I remove the power, it slowly fades out. So yeah, I mean, it, it's if it if actually if I actually just unplugged it and kept replugging it in really fast, um, you wouldn't notice that it was uh, powered off. So yeah, I just have to like refresh. I just have to like. Power and refresh. Like it. a microcontroller. Yeah, so basically you have to do it every half second. Like a watchdog. You're a watchdog timer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you unplug it and plug it, and as long as you unplug and plug every like half second, it doesn't, yeah. you know, and you only need to like turn on for a, you know a microsecond to turn it on yeah. and refresh it. So it's kind of an interesting display. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in like lower power displays or really, they're, it's very bright and sharp and beautiful. Yeah. Well, if you're ever thinking about making your own, you know, watch. And you want to use these displays? You can get this breakout board and like make your own little watch dev board, and you know, but until you're ready to go to manufacturing. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So that, this is the back of the uh, the breakout. So yeah, we just have some five volt shifting circuitry, a uh, regulator. Uh, this is designed by K Town. We actually designed this board two years ago, um, when these displays first came out, and um, they were a little bit more delicate and more expensive. Um, so it just didn't make sense at the time to um, to carry it. And um, recently, we um, we picked up a bunch at a, a reasonable price, and so you know we got we sell our pricing, so we could actually have a breakout board that wasn't like sixty bucks. I yeah. wanted to make it so it was reasonable. Is there any grayscale, or is it just on off? This is only on off. On There's off. no grayscale on gotcha. these. Yeah, they're just monochrome. All right. You can invert them, I think. I don't okay. need Someone wants an eight and a half by eleven. <laughs> they do make a bigger version, but we don't have really good pricing on that. Yeah. They, they do make a, a much. These larger are very new version. too, as far as like. This is a very new technology. Yeah. yeah, this is a new technology from Sharp. Very new. So it's the, I definitely remember two years ago when they first came out. Yeah. But now that all these like e-watches, like the Pebble and, and similar, yeah. are using this display, um, you know, we're gonna the price came down. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to get them. Okay. Well, very easy to use though. Very easy. And that was new products. Whew. Got through it.